we are live on Instagram with Rain Delay Podcast Episode 3. Biko Scala here, of course, as per usual. Our coordinating producer, Chad Reese, is here and, and has been ready to rumble. It is 5.05 p.m. Eastern. We're five minutes past the time that we said we would start this podcast. Now, a big part of this is this is extracurricular for us. So, you know, we like to record after work hours people are getting off work they can start listening live on instagram or you know listening in the future on spotify all that good stuff uh apple Podcasts, youtube watching uh but it turns out josh tolevsky my co-host five minutes after we said we would start recording now it is 506 p.m eastern is still nowhere to be found and the people are expecting a podcast. They're piling into the Instagram live here. We had to start it because, I mean, the people expect some consistencies on Wednesday nights here, Chad. Yeah, I'm I'm so disappointed in him. But, um, you know, we're going <laughs> to give him a chance to redeem himself. We've got everything ready for yeah. when he gets here. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to get going, honestly. I feel like we've got so much that we are going to be able to talk about. And I'm just getting, like, more and more energized waiting for Josh to get here so that when he does, we're just going to be able to get right into it. None of this mic test nonsense. <laughs> Correct. None of this preliminary right. conversation stuff where he's got to no. tell you about his woes. No, he has to show up and immediately Correct. start broadcasting to the world. Right. I don't care about his woes today. And if he has woes for us, it has to be shared yeah. to the masses, uh, both live on Instagram and also to be recorded in podcast and YouTube video format. Uh, Riley Wooten, Todd Patton, but back it is great to see the people piling up in the comment section. Connor Higgins, a uh, part of a big trade from the bananas to the party animals. Good to see Big Butta in here on Instagram as well. Uh, Chad, because we don't have our darling Josh here, I'd, I'd love to start with you. You are the man of the hour now, even though you are not Honored. on my Instagram live. I probably should bring you into the Instagram should I? live. Uh, yeah, I yeah, think definitely. I just reinstalled I'll Instagram it. on this phone. Okay. Uh, I got a new phone Perfect. a few months ago, so and I haven't really. Done I much just with realized. It. Yeah, I just realized it's a one-way conversation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for all the good people on Instagram, mm -hmm. since uh, they cannot hear you. So you'll be coming on, Higgs. Yep. You are my guy. You are my guy. Uh, oh, it is heartwarming to see the people piling in here did you have an absolutely delightful weekend chad i i did i did have a wonderful weekend yeah. and well wouldn't you Sup, know it Sup, oh! right when i think that i get a chance to be involved in this podcast josh <laughs> Talevsky <laughs> rears his ugly head did you guys start without me we well, are live trying josh. To rear his head. oh we are on oh the, josh, the, 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 the Sup, podcast players? has started bro you guys get – oh, that's picking up some audio. Oh, yeah, I can right. see that, that it's quite, channel. It's quite hot, too. So I'm going to bring it down a little <laughs> yeah. bit. I'm going to drop your – I'm going to drop your decibels there. Sup, players? Josh Sup, is Josh. hot. I'm Biko, hot. you no, hear me, hot. bro? Josh is hot. We're Biko, you hear me, bro? Josh is hot. Does he even have a – does he have a hear. microphone? Oh, you, no, he's already he's, got his mic. Yep. He's, he doesn't hear a word you're saying, man. you got to get in this Discord Biko. call. Biko. That's not connected to – he's only getting my microphone. Biko. you got to join on Discord, Josh. Biko. I can't hear him. I, I know that it sounds like far, far off in the distance he's saying my name, but I won't hey, deign to respond to Josh hogwash. until he joins the Discord and officially joins the hogwash. podcast. Hogwash? You're the one who's late, Josh. Oh, I'm sorry that I, I'm sorry that I was doing my job. Oh. It's 5.09, Josh. Clock out. Clock out, dude. I'm this sorry guy doesn't know how to I'm clock out. Responsible and pay bills on time. <laughs> that I can Josh is screaming. For. He's screaming in the oh, background, which is God, which is great to hear. Um, I'm so excited. I mean, he's gonna be hot. He's not happy that Chad and I did this, mm -mm. and now we've got a red hot Josh. No, that's what I'm saying. Coming We're onto the podcast, right into this. Yeah. You can't yeah. hear a word you're saying <laughs> either. It's I. I get to just like, I, take this all in myself. That's cool. And I know Josh was tied up with some some marketing stuff. Our marketing queens, Karen Savannah, had him working on some uh -oh. roster release roster release shenanigans here. Uh, but past five p.m., which is the clear cutoff of Josh goes from the statistical savant of Banana Land to Rain Delay podcast co-host, like and Batman. he. he Correct, just like Batman, and and right now he his balance is slung too far mm -hmm. in the fans first entertainment 
uh, window, and Chad and I are just trying to bring him back. We're just, I mean, this is the fourth episode of our podcast, Josh. It's we're we've already beaten the odds. Eighty percent of podcasts don't have more than one episode. Are you trying to make it more tougher on us here, Mister Tolevsky? Uh, he can't hear me. Nope, he I'm just venting to myself, really. Okay. Yeah. I gotta restart my Mac. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh Wi-Fi ain't working, bro. Wi-Fi ain't working. Not for me. Uh oh. Wi-Fi isn't Classic. working well. This is something that could have been figured out if Josh got here at 5 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, now we're Hello. getting somewhere. Oh, there he is. Now we are talking. Well, Josh, it is the 10-minute mark in the podcast. You have uh, officially shown your face. Can you explain to the people why you were not just 10, but 15 minutes late to being able to talk on this podcast today? Yeah, uh, I'm requesting to to join the live, by the way. I didn't want to yeah, request got... it, but Instagram's telling me I need to, which, uh, you I'm know, kind of feel just like invited I should, you. Oh, I should be go. getting an invite rather than requesting yeah. to join. Well, I did invite you, and I have requested, and now you're in. So now we've got the broadcast boys all in on the Instagram live here. Yeah, yeah this, this feels is... good recording inception here uh all right josh tolevsky you have the floor we said 5 p.m podcast start we started at 505 give you five minutes of grace time you walked in around 508 and now it is 516 and you have the floor uh hello everybody great to see you all uh happy wednesday hope uh everyone's day is is going well. Uh, this is reminiscent of the time I was in Portland, Maine, and they started a broadcast without me because I had to use the bathroom. Uh, but <laughs> that was but not I'm me. not upset that about not it me. at all. Uh, regardless, I'm, I'm a little late. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I, I, I'm, I'm doing a job. I'm sorry that I'm, I'm being responsible. I'm sorry that I, I pay my bills on time. I'm sorry that I take out my trash every day. I'm sorry that I, I do these adult things, and, and sometimes they cause me to be late for a podcast. Well, yeah, this is, these are fair responses and excuses, and I forgive you for everything that you have laid out there. I'm a forgiving person, but I do not forget. Don't okay. get me wrong. I do not forget. <laughs> uh, but, and, and it's fair in that we promise the powers that be at Banana Land, those who give us our shekels to pay our bills, that this podcast would not affect our day jobs. Um, but unfortunately, I never saw, I never saw our day jobs affecting the podcast. You know, Chad and I had gotten everything we needed to get done today so that we could then crank this podcast out. But uh, Kara and Savannah just holding you late. You were stuck in the gulag with the queens of marketing. Just, just slightly. Um, it's okay. I'm not gonna blame them for it at all. Okay, it was my decision at the end of the day. I'm responsible for my actions. That's what. That's what this is all about. So, uh, you know, you're just trying to wrap some things up, make sure you're ready and uh, geared up for the next day. It's all about. Uh, it's all about just going about your day, trying to be better each and every day, and, and this was an uh, kind of an effort in that, you know? Yeah, well, that's, that's good stuff. Uh, okay, yeah, so Matt Malatesta and Nolan Daniel have also been announced as firefighters. So those are the four guys in total who have been announced as firefighters. They got a nice little core of banana ballers there. That answers that question Wait, as far Matt as what Malatesta the world did? knows. Yes, Matt Malatesta, wow. firefighter. Well, that, I hope the world knows that. If they didn't, of. that's... That's breaking news, but I did see somebody put Matt in the chat on Instagram, and I know that he is going to be a firefighter, so uh, breaking news, yeah, the splitter specialist, Fear the Beard, is going to be uh, in the red and yellow this coming time of year. Uh, Josh Tolevsky, I would like to give you my condolences for your Georgia Bulldogs. I was started, I picked up the game with three minutes left, and the Bulldogs down 10 points, I believe. Watched the touchdown, saw the saw the boys pull it within three. But I said, even if this team loses, it's fine because it's like an eight or 12 team playoff this year. Shows you how much I'm keeping track of college football. Uh, and then I see all the hodgepodge about Florida State not making the college football playoff, Alabama getting the number four seed. And I realize that your beloved Georgia Bulldogs who just had like a 30 something game win streak snapped or what have you. Uh, also do not get to compete for a national championship after winning the last two. And I, I mean, this is news to me and 
another reason why I think the college football playoff should be expanded. Uh, that's right. And uh, you texted me an additional condolence because you were unaware of uh, the facts of the matter concerning this 2023-2024 uh, college football playoff uh, committee and the layout of said playoff. Um, <laughs> right. There's a thing that is going around. Some people are talking about it. Uh, some aren't, but uh, most of the people who are intensely following college football out there have been talking about this, and it's the Tulevsky curse, believe it or not. So, you know, the Bulldogs had, had ripped off this this 29 uh, consecutive wins, which included two national championships, uh, right. which, mind you, SEC record, uh, 29 straight wins is an SEC record. So it's pretty good. Feels pretty good. Correct. You should, but, should be proud of the boys for that. You know, they're going to miss the college football playoff after being there for two straight years. And it's funny because the last two years that I was in school, the Bulldogs were just going undefeated and winning these national championships left and right in football. And then all of a sudden, you know, the kid leaves Athens in May and uh, this team is still holding their own. They're gonna they're gonna go and and achieve an undefeated regular season, but come that SEC championship game, they're for some reason not going to be able to pull through. And that was the same kind of thing that was happening uh, before Josh Tulevsky got to the University of Georgia as well. <laughs> right. So I'm telling right. you, there's there's a bit of a curse that is going on, and uh, a lot of a lot of guys are talking about it. I am surprised that. Uh, Kirk Herbstreit, Chris Fowler, and some of those guys actually did not mention it at all. Yeah, as as am I. Uh, I hesitate to call something happening once a curse. I kind of want to see it happen again next year before I can apply the big C word to it there as Josh crunches carrots, which I noticed people were pretty intrigued by in the comment section there. Uh, to, to let the people be involved here because this is supposed to be a two-way road and I'll, I'll break up our conversation on the CFP really quickly to say, well, it's on the top of my head. Uh, but back said that he loves the mustache Josh and is wondering when it will return. Yeah. Just chew your carrots. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's, just, it's, it's really? an audio medium. That's okay. You can take your time. Who said that you can't eat some carrots on a podcast, you know? Who said well, that that's not good audio? I think that might notoriously be the absolute worst food to eat on a podcast, actually. Biko. <laughs> hey, Biko, what is the most watched uh, ripe rundown in history, though? Bryson Bloomer ASMR eating bananas on second base had like 60,000 views on Instagram. Not bonus I mean, worthy at the time, but it it was more than anything else. I'm telling you, you, you never know how people might respond to the chewing of some carrots during a podcast. Well, you don't know it till you try it, and, and you're trying it, and I appreciate that. Uh, it seems like you're sidestepping the mustache question here. Okay, no, I, I just got a little sidetracked because you brought up the carrots, and uh, right. I'm enjoying them. Uh, the mustache, yeah. it's a good question. I have a wedding upcoming this weekend. Oh. Um, I'm... I think I'm just going to stay clean shaven for that. It's a little, little too soon to just start and, and be dealing with some scruff. Mm -hmm. and what, I, yes. I don't know. <laughs> I'd just rather look uh, look a little clean, like I have myself put okay. together uh, for this, this one little event. And then I think after that, uh, it's a legitimate, let's, let's try and get this thing back and going. Because it is, it is definitely a goal right now to have it ready by opening day in Tampa. Now, now, Josh, in the inaugural episode of our podcast, you proudly proclaimed uh, that you were going all in on, on No Shave November. And it's December now. You have all the right in the world to shave your mustache, but you did shave during November. And part of me, I, I don't know if we need to punish you in some form, if, if you've already <laughs> done that to yourself. But, you know, I just want to kind of hold you accountable here, as uh, Coach Reddy says. No, I... Uh... I felt bad about it, too. Yes, I was gung-ho about it. I'm pretty sure it is on the record in maybe episode zero that I, I said I was going to uh, to just go gung-ho on the mustache. Movember, that's what it's all about. And, um, no, I, d I shaved very, very close to Thanksgiving, and it wasn't to appease my family, who were really giving me some gruff about uh, my facial hair when they had seen me uh, leading up to Thanksgiving. 
but it was uh, actually a decision that was kind of informed by a piece of content that is yet to launch. This is oh. a tease of a piece of content. Should come out on YouTube at some time. So uh, I think when it hits and you see, uh, you know, my mug in the uh, video, maybe you'll have an idea of, of why there might have been uh, a clean-shaven Josh Tulevsky. Little Maybe even your mugs. Uh, plural. Little tease there. It's a great video. I'm excited for it to come out. Yeah, it's it's going to be a good one. Okay, so keep our eyes peeled on YouTube for a video to come out with Josh's shaved face because at the time the mustache was not powerful enough to live on the internet in a video that could get hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, millions, quite possibly billions of views. And you didn't want to go down uh, in history with a patchy stash. No, no. It wasn't ready for primetime uh, TV or YouTube yet. Yeah, we got a lot of love for Chad in the Instagram comments. I'm uh, Caprice I'm fired up. Yeah, he's that our, Chad's uh, mug is on the screen. I he's mean, our, he's, he's really our secret weapon. He's our beautiful boy. Thanks, guys. Thanks. That's a fact. Talk about a beautifully clean face, uh, clean shaved face right there. Chad, how often do you have to shave to keep that face so slick? I shave every morning. It's part of my routine. I've been like really trying to to hunker down and like set routines for myself and I've got like a whole hour long thing that if I if I mess it up in the morning, which I did today, uh it all falls apart. So I'm amazed that I'm here right now, guys. But uh you know, I got like a nice electric razor. I've I totally stopped just getting those uh straight razors. Because it's it's every day. I do it every single day, and I don't want to have to like put on shaving cream. Biko, I know you don't even worry about that anyway. I know you just use Correct. whatever old one you've been using for months. Um, Correct. But you know, I I take pride in having a nice soft face. Yeah, I had a I had a very brief electric razor age when I was in high school and I don't think it worked very well and then I went to the straight razors and then uh, early on in my bananas tenure I actually purchased the lawnmower 2.0 from Manscaped it was supposed to be like the straight razor out out in the world although I don't know if it was actually meant for your face because Manscaped is generally made for for grooming other parts of your body uh, and every single time I'm pr I promise you every single time I use the lawnmower 2.0 I cut my face and I usually cut my <laughs> face like two to five times and uh, and after a probably double digit like probably about 10 to 12 times of trying to do this and continuing to cut my face every time and being like why like the definition of stupidity is just failing and trying the exact same thing over and over again. I shot Manscaped a little email and was like, hey, your razor is it's like defective. giving me permanent scars on my face. Yeah, it's too effective and I, I don't know what to do. And uh, credit to Manscaped. This actually turns out to be a Manscaped win. Uh, they were like, ah, you don't need to worry about sending it back. Gave me a full refund. They were like, hopefully it works better for you in the future. And I have not brought it to my face since then. But it seemed I had high hopes for it. I was just trying to help a buddy's uh, hockey podcast out one of my one of my cues guys and use his little code so i was like ah sure i'll get myself a fancy straight razor but as chad alluded to uh, yeah i'm just a disposable razor guy i mean i've shaved my face with water and or just like the fuzzy soap in the grayson stadium broadcast booth <laughs> was, close to 100 times I, I did I, not know you were using the the regular hand the foaming hand soap that's crazy i remember specifically the night that we were on I want to say it was the very first time we were on ESPN Plus back in April of 2022. I yes. <laughs> was shocked to see you using some random razor that looks like it might have been used for, like, leg hair, just getting water and soap in the old bathroom in the press box in Grayson Stadium and... Yeah, well, as you can see, my my face, my facial hair grows at an exceptionally fast rate. I mean, this is, I haven't shaved in like two days here. Uh, so my debut on ESPN Plus, naturally, I needed a shave within a half an hour of going live or else I'd pretty much have a full-blown beard like the man named DeLorean who has entered the chat and, and is out on shaving, understandably so. Uh, 
Yeah, but no, I, I mean, like you know, this is not just, an ad for Manscaped, as this now being pointed out as well. We are not sponsored by them yet. <laughs> you just you got to be ready at any point. And I did. I was up in Beacon, New York, and actually got a little bar of soap from some cute little boutique. It was supposed to be like a shaving bar of soap. Um, so I've I've kind of leveled up in that respect. And I'm I'm learning every day, you know. But it is still just a straight razor, and I've got like five of them in my bag, and I reach in, and about one out of every five times I'm digging around, I cut myself. But I come out with a razor and eventually get the job done. You wanna you wanna borrow my shaving cream sometime? Like I'm I'm pretty standard shaver, straight razor with the shaving cream, little after shave. I try and take care of my uh my face a little bit. You go down or you go up with your shaving strokes? Down. Yes, I go down as well. Um, I I think the elder generation goes up. And I when I Googled it, when I was figuring out how to shave as a high schooler, they were saying to go up. But I feel like I'm always, I feel like I'm going to peel my skin I'm, right off. I'm, I'm terrified to shave up. That's the best I'm gonna part say of right an now. electric razor is you get to go up and it like gets, it like goes against the the grain and you just get like everything out, like at the root. It feels amazing. Yeah. I'm out on that. I'm out on it. There's I mean, garbage, I'm interested. It's not, there's, like, you're not like just putting exposed razors to your skin. If I get the right razor, maybe, maybe I could do it. But, you know, I, it's that's not a priority for me at this point in life. You know, it is a priority for me as the uh, love for Chad just is going absolutely crazy. I think crazy this is the here. first time I've ever been on live or and used Instagram in like three <laughs> years. So the people that have followed me for so long are like, what is happening? <laughs> Ian Schrift, speaking of another podcast in Banana Land, said he thought it was a Manscaped uh, advertisement. Uh, currently, we have no advertisements, so advertisers out there, um, if you want, about a thousand people listening slash watching a podcast uh, once a week, we've, oh, boy, do we have a show for you, and we will advertise absolutely anything. Um, no, it's not a Manscaped ad, because obviously I was gashing my face up with the product, but... Uh, very commendable customer service. What I, what my top priority is because I would love to have a little fracas here and and a discussion for the people is to get back to the college football playoff. Took a while, but I've gotten back to it. Josh, you you not only stand by the four teams, even though your Georgia Bulldogs now don't have a shot at the national championship because of the current format. Uh, you also stood by the two teams in the old BCS format. I like I. I, I can't possibly understand it. So before I give you all the reasons why it's idiotic, I'd love to hear your reasons why you like it. First of all, four-team playoff, there's nothing wrong with it in my mind. Now, okay, it, it, it's a little different. I, I'll, I'll actually make somewhat of a, an amendment to that. There was nothing wrong with the four-team playoff before the selection show on Sunday because oh. you oh. – you, you go undefeated in a season, and you're pretty much going to make the college football playoff. But now they set this precedent that Florida State could go undefeated and still not make the playoff, and that a one-loss team would still uh, better than them and more worthy of, of being in a college football playoff, trying to gun for a national championship. So... I, I don't know. It, it only makes me believe now that the BCS and the computers deciding which two teams played in the national championship was uh, I'm, like that was that was the best decision that was ever made. And I don't know why they overturned that. Uh, it made a lot of other things matter. It made bowl games matter, made Rose Bowls, Orange Bowls, Tostitos Fiesta Bowls matter. And uh, <laughs> it was still fun to watch the two best teams in the end square off for a national title at the same time. You know, Tim Flo Hat Biko actually just came up with uh, a possible reason why this has all happened here. Um, I'm, I'm just realizing because next year – the playoff will go to 12 teams, correct? I, I'm not as tapped in to the college football landscape as you are, but I think it's going to 12 teams and maybe it's like the five, is it the five conference power? Well, there's not even going to be a pack 12 anymore. So is it the four big conference winners or is it all just the committee decides the 12 teams? I think it might just wind up being a top 12. It will be just the 12 best teams according to the committee. 
Uh, I, I would need to, to double check on that, but I also would not be opposed yeah. to just you win your conference and you still get into the playoff and then the rest are kind of at-large teams. Right. Yeah. No, I think I, – well, I don't care. The, the, the committee can have complete jurisdiction over all 12 teams because the 13th best team in the country is not going to win a, a national championship. But – I think it's very possible for any of the top six teams to win a national championship. I just think it's insane what happened to Florida State this year. But as I get back to my conspiracy theory here, they wrong Florida State on the final year of the four-team college football playoff so that they can always say going forward when it's the 12-team, why we don't want what happened to Florida State. Now you have to have all these extra championship tournament games, the, the TV advertisements are pouring in. I believe the top four teams are going to have a bye, and then it's going to be like uh, the eight teams, and then you play to play somebody who uh, who had a bye. Anyhow, I digress. Uh, I personally think it's absolutely asinine that you have 128 teams in college football, and then a, a committee comes together and just says that these are the four best teams. They get to play for the championship. When, uh, not to beat a dead horse, you have the Florida State Seminoles here who went undefeated, won the ACC, and now they're playing in the Orange Bowl against your Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, and both head coaches, Norvell and Kirby, looked like they wanted to absolutely be doing anything else in the world than that virtual press conference, uh, the first one that they had here for the bowl. Yeah, they were they were miserable there. Uh, the screenshots are, are pretty hilarious. Here is the problem, though, with a 12-team college football playoff is, is where is the incentive and the weight – to go undefeated other than, I guess, get a bye. It really still doesn't feel like it's that big of a deal to, to get the bye. But, like, where's the incentive? Because the great thing about college football up to this point is that, like, every single game has mattered so much. And now I feel like Alabama and Georgia aren't going to be all that phased if they wind up losing a game in the regular season or even, like, you know, these teams play each other in the SEC championship next year, hypothetically. Someone's going to win, someone's going to lose, and say that they're both undefeated up to that point. Like, they both, at the end of the day, are still going to know that they're getting in. I just, I wonder where the incentive is, is all. I see that. You're losing the stakes throughout the season uh, a tad bit. And I'm not a college football guy. I mean, I, I truly have not sat down and watched actually. I mean, I've, I've had it on the background. I've been in some places, this and that. I haven't sat down and truly watched a full game of college football this entire year. Um, and I, I haven't done that with the NFL either, honestly. I'm, I'm honestly just kind of hashtag tapped out when I'm in my banana ball uh, prep season. But it's... Oh, I went to Shaky Town. I'm back. Uh, yeah, but just from an outsider, I'm like, it seems insane that Florida State doesn't have a chance to win the national championship this year. And then you get the like throwback. My cousin was at UCF during the Scott Frost era when they went undefeated, and they've still got the banner hanging in their stadium when, you know, maybe they would have been the eight seed or uh, or made it into – they definitely would have made it into a 12-team uh, college football playoff that year. But anyhow, it's just – I want teams to be able to win the national championship. I do understand you lose the massive stress on the journey there in that any misstep means you probably don't have a chance to compete for the ultimate prize. I mean, people forget that there used to be 26 teams in Major League Baseball and only four would make the playoffs. Think about that. Correct. Uh, and, and that also seems insane to me. I mean, like when you just look at major sports. I mean, like I said, it's like 128 teams in the FCS and four of them get selected. So I really like it bumping up to 12, but like, you know, college basketball, you have 350 odd teams, 72 of them will get a chance at the national championship. It's a different game. So it's not apples to oranges. The national football league, if you want to go football, there's 32 teams and 14 of them get a chance at the playoffs. And also it's different because that's literally you're just playing. It's record-based. Like, there is no committee who says, oh, the Patriots had a worse record than the Bills, but let's put the Patriots in because the Josh Allen broke his leg in Week 17, and we think the Patriots would actually get us better ratings. So, anyhow, into the weeds a little bit. Glad to have that discussion. Uh, it was it was a lot less violent than I thought it was going to be. I thought, I thought the two of us would be 
at blows there, but I think you offer up a good point, and I still like my 12-team playoff going forward. But also, I have to say, that's from such a casual fan who is literally only tuning in for those playoff games and kind of just want to see a team win a championship, and, and that's what excites me. I'm just, I'm just trying to offer up an intelligent and level-headed response here. I'm trying to be a cordial guy. Again, this is part of this is part of being an adult, you know, paying my taxes, taking out my trash, helping Savannah and Kara per se. You know. Right. Josh right. You brought I've up a, a curse it. earlier, and that, that seg- segues me into something that I wanted to talk about with you guys. And that is the curse, the new showtime show by Nathan Fielder. And I wanted to know if you guys have seen any of it, how much of it you've watched. Cause uh it's, that it's, was, it's something. Uh, that was an unbelievable segue, Chad. Um, I have not watched one episode of The Curse. Um, I'm trying to get my people here in Jersey City to invest in it. Uh, I don't know. It's I know it's on Showtime and like Peacock or something. I think I, it's on Paramount Plus as well. Paramount Plus. Yeah, yeah. Like so an I have really f- though, like a Showtime add-on, which is an extra like. Yeah, I think you really. Like I think Showtime. Something. I think Showtime, or you watch it illegally, which I would never admit to doing on a podcast of record. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, long story short, I have not seen it, but I'm dying to see it. And at least once the entire season's out, I'll probably very quickly at that point watch it. But currently, I am not up to date and can imagine that it's Banana Pants Bonkers. So it's, it's not a great podcast topic for me. Chad, Josh, you've been watching? Yeah. Chad, have there been uh, more – has there been more than one episode released? There are four. There, there are been four one out? Every, I've yeah, only seen Sunday, episode you know, one. You know, four episodes? Out. I've only seen episode one. Oh, I, uh, I, I also only watched episode one um, for a minute. And then this weekend, actually, I was up late and was like, screw it. I think it was Sunday, actually. I was like, screw it. I'm just going to just binge the other three. And um, it is a wild ride so far, guys. Our boy Nathan is doing it, and he's doing it well. And I, 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 want to, I, I really wanted to talk about more with it, but I'm not going to spoil anything. That's fine. But it, it really, really is a great show so far. And... Um, I, I think I think that you would really appreciate it, Biko. Josh, you definitely need to catch up. It only gets crazier from there, and uh, it's really interesting seeing Nathan Fielder act. I, th- I think I yeah. know. I'm intrigued think, by that. I think I know what I'm gonna just do tonight because I I don't have any any big plans per se. Um, and no burgers, I, guys. I've got I've got bad news. Yeah. No. Got real no. bad news. No. Break it to me, Josh. Let me uh, know gently, Wednesday, please. boys, burger scoob. Uh, it would appear has been canceled tonight. Oh! <laughs> Knife into my heart and twist it. Well, I mean, I'm guessing you don't have the core four. Someone skimping out on you, and and you can't do it without the original four horsemen of the burger apocalypse. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, who do you think is flaked? You guys, uh, you guys got any guesses? You only get one, so. Okay, cool. Well, it's not you, so it's either Zacharias Bro, Ian Shrifterson, or Christopher Sachi Pants. Sachi Meister. Uh, yeah, I guess Zach Bro. Uh, Chad is guessing Zach Bro is the issue. I am going to guess it is Ian Shrift. Oh, uh, point. Chad Reese. Point Chad ah. Reese. Really good. Let's go. Guys just guys just a little busy. Happens to the best of us. I've I've been one to be like, you know what? I thought we'd get them and and then the day of I I wind up not not having the the ability to be able to spare like an hour and go and consume some some nice meat. I bet he's working too. That's the that's the problem, you know. Josh works a couple minutes past five. Zach, bro, he is a sick, sick man. And I've gone over to him and Evan's abode and have been watching college football, whatever, hanging out with Evan, some pals, and Zach, bro, is just in there, absolutely editing away, dawn to dusk. I mean, that guy, the amount of content that he pumps out is astonishing. But he was grinding um, one time during Burger Scuba Wednesday. 
We were oh, at I Sam Fly that. Barbecue, my current numero uno on the <laughs> list, by the way. And Zach Bro was making sure that an episode of Banana Land got out that night. And, you know, I think that he was distracted. It may have affected his rating a little bit, but I'm not going to judge him for that. Nobody else was with me on Sam Fly Barbecue. I thought it was immaculate. Um, not biased at all. It's not where I grew up and spent 20 years of my life. But, uh, you know, big respect for Zach Bro wherever he is. He's a he's a hard hat and lunch pail kind of guy, you know. <laughs> yeah. He's just trying to yeah, he's, he's just trying to wake up his and, big and get out of the day alive. Oh my gosh, he's 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 looking more grisly and manly than I've ever seen before in every every single time that we have our our weekly content chat with uh, the powers that be. I mean, I feel like he's got another inch on his beard, and he's looking like he's packed on another five pounds of muscle. It's all uh, that cooking he's been doing. He made some gumbo about a week or two ago. There's oh, a uh, gumbo. additional gumbo mm. uh, vlog that he recorded <laughs> as he cooked vlog. it. That thing is a real delight to watch stuff. as oh, well. Man. The I, vlog I is that. just as good as the gumbo tasted. Dude, I missed the gumbo, and I was heartbroken by that. I was, I was so upset. Uh, speaking of missing the gumbo, uh, Chad, when are you blessing me with your presence in New York City? I continue to forget. I'm coming in Monday morning and leaving Tuesday night, so Monday night's for the boys. Monday, Monday, Biko and Chad in the Big Apple. Okay, good. That's just something to mark down on my mental calendar. Really important to have on the podcast. Uh, something that I would love for both of you guys to come up north for next year is this past Saturday. I had never heard of it before. Turns out it's been happening for like maybe close to a decade. Uh, right across the river from my hometown of Saugerties, New York, you pop across the Hudson and you go over to Rhinebeck, New York. They had a parade uh, called Sinterklaas. There was a whole Sinterklaas celebration. It's like a big Dutch version of basically Christmas and stuff. And they've got like a Dutch version of Santa Claus and his little like gremlins. It's like a combination of Christmas and what Dwight does for the <laughs> office when he does his like German thing. They actually do have like all these little gremlins around basically that are Sinterklaas's minions. I can't remember their name, but they'll either like give you presents if they think you've been good or they'll whip you. <laughs> if you that. oh, yeah. That's scary. So, do you I'll actually d- mean yeah. gremlins or are you are you like is this a slip of the tongue and you you're trying to say elves? Um, no, no, that's not grem. It's not elves and it's not gremlins, but I'm just saying they're like gremlin like creatures. Okay. Uh, yep. if I do a, if I do a, a really quick Sinterklaas Google and then I do a little Sinterklaas minions, uh, it's, I'm sure it's going to tell me, oh no, now I'm just getting Santa with minions from Despicable Me. Uh, so that wasn't correct at all. <laughs> but anyhow, people can do their own research and figure out what, the you know they're basically the oompa loompas of Sinterklaas. it's his version of elves um but the the whole the whole parade was just it's honoring like all kinds of animals and stuff and it was the year of the ant so there's a lot of uh ant based celebrations <laughs> yeah and tons of music uh it was I, I i promise you it was the greatest parade i've ever been to in my life and i would have to end up in some bizarre part of the world seeing some real creative goofy parade to see anything better because it it was one of my favorite things i've ever experienced it was absolutely delightful it was an hour of pure imagination bliss do you have to dress up like you're from holland to do this like is it is it themed where even the the visitors and the guests are dressing up no uh not at all and although some people the stars are like a big theme so a lot of people had these stars that they were kind of carrying around like kind of lit up stars and they could keep above their heads um but no i mean people were just for the most part dressed up in run of the mill uh, i actually saw two hockey sweaters and i had completed a trade in fantasy hockey with zach frangelo our director of entertainment and both the hockey sweaters were players that i traded for from zach in a i took three players from him. I saw two of them and I didn't see any other hockey sweaters on the entire night. So uh, shout out Sorokin and Zabinajad. That was pretty bizarre. Kind of felt like I was meant to be there once I, once I saw all that. Uh, yeah, but it's just, it's just a goofy little time. And they've kind of, you know, uh, it's some of these, some of the things that they're bringing through here are like dragons and mythical beasts. And it's got like 15 to 20 people all holding up little sticks and all moving in unison. I mean, I think they're practicing, 
to unveil these uh, puppets. It, a lot of it's run by Arm of the Sea, which is a local theater group, and, and they've got really great plays and stuff, and it's always, they're all pup, puppet oriented. Uh, so That's anyway. Awesome. We gotta make our way up there for that, Josh. That sounds, that sounds right up my alley. I, I, oh, Chad, I Sinter Colossus the, for you, buddy. The animal next year is still cool. Um, ants sounds awesome. You, you don't see a lot of parades for ants. Yeah, won't be the year of the ant next year. Won't the ants are done? Twenty twenty three was ants, so you don't know what the what the animal of celebration, the bell of the ball, is going to be next year. But it, I I'm sure there could know. be ants I might involved. Like prepare a little bit and might come and support, yeah. you know, whatever animal is. Like if it's if next year's like the year of the sea lion, like you know, I don't know. Maybe I dress up like <laughs> sea lion. My bold prediction is year of the prairie dog. Year of the prairie uh, dog. Ooh. That's fun. It's an insanely bold prediction. I, I think it's going to be the year of the tuna. Ooh, that's tuna. delicious. Correct. It Man. could really be anything. If we're getting the if we're getting a whole three hundred and sixty five days for ants, right. I feel like we can there any any the sky's the limit. Couldn't agree more. Uh Steve Kellogg saying, uh, I think these gremlins have already turned if they're whipping kids talking about Sinterklaas as little minions because he, he also said you shouldn't feed him after midnight. I mean, it's just classic Steve Kellogg wit right there. Uh, man, I wish I could remember the names of presents? those things. Uh, there's presents. Oh, yeah, there's there's presents being involved in Sinterklaas. What about yeah. food? Um, there was, I didn't see any, so a lot of the businesses, there's incredible restaurants all in the Rhinebeck area. A lot of them were doing Sinterklaas, like celebration themed, like, you know, you give them like 55 bucks, you eat all day and, and drink till you, you know, fall asleep on the street or something type deals. Um, and we ended up at Cinnamon, which is the local Indian restaurant. It's absolutely, um, blows your mind incredible food so that was i mean like i I randomly played it perfect started kind of at the end of center claws so then it went by and then we and then at the end the last thing you see is there's a big banner saying join the parade so then everybody who watches the parade goes by just like files in and is like that at the end of it they're banging drums and all kinds of stuff so we're just like dancing around and you could kind of speed up and get past the parade so you start reliving it as you're going past it and then we walked into a bar below a hardware store uh called the uh the i think it's the oh it's uh, sorry the hardware store the wine it's not the wine cellar but it's something like that so anyway it's like you're walking to a hardware store you go down in the basement there's a whole big bar and because we'd start at the back of the parade we like cheated we basically uh time jumped and got in there when no one was in there and then like five minutes after it piled in and that is where I watched the final three minutes of the Georgia Alabama game and realized of its existence because I was in Sinterklaas land and forgot that the sport of football existed until I stumbled into that establishment. Uh, wow. So anyway, Sinterklaas, I'd love if you guys join next year. Put it, I'll put it on your calendars once I find out the date. Yeah, sounds awesome. We're gonna make our own puppets as well. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> we could bring the Biko and Josh uh, hand puppets up there. Yeah, your Pico still has a black eye, right? As far as I know. It does. It does. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about that because at the time, for those who don't know, uh, there were, for the summer series um, in of Banana Ball in August of 2022, we made sock puppets of both Pico and Josh. And at the time, Pico had a black eye from getting drilled by a baseball. And so I thought it would be right. funny to include that detail on his – Sock puppet. It is uh, funny. Yeah, the sock funny. puppet never ended up getting used. Um, I'm still very proud of how <laughs> yeah. it turned out, and but it's just been chilling in yeah. the back of the broadcast set for you know the entire year this year, and uh, that was one thing I was thinking about is like we gotta, we gotta bring those out again. We gotta do something with those. Maybe new ones. Maybe ones that don't have a black eye, or you know have, I don't know like a, if Josh has had a mustache at that point, we can't use his, but. Right, we would just have to rip the mustache off of the sock puppet. Yeah, I hot glued those things on, man. They ain't coming off that fabric. Oh. <laughs> those are also like cheap socks that I got for like six bucks from Walmart. Yeah, well, I mean, they resemble us really well. I'd say that, you know, you take those puppets out with you to a bar and uh, they're, they're probably chatting up some folks, you know? <laughs> Especially the Josh puppet. Uh, <laughs> so... 
So I speaking of the Josh puppet. Uh, oh, my ring light just almost took a tumble off my laptop. Um, I would love to hear what your experience was like watching the game on Saturday because you usually have a, a pretty good setup and and kind of are prepared on how to attack such a thing and then. Obviously, you must have sunk into a, a, a little bit of sadness at the end. But I would just love to hear your timeline of the 29-game winning streak ending against Alabama and the, you know, SEC championship of all places. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, we can just go ahead and preface this by saying that there is somewhat of a pit of despair point that is coming <laughs> in this story. Yeah. But let's, <laughs> but there is. let's let's take a couple steps back here because all week, all last week leading up to this game, I was ecstatic. I mean, I was thrilled, oh. jazzed to the core because it was oh. the week of the SEC championship game. Traditionally, such a great day. We used to throw some some big like parties at my house in college. And I'd cook a bunch of chicken wings and just have people over and we'd watch the game and it was spectacular. It was awesome. All these people would get tickets to Atlanta wanting to go to the games. And I was like, guys, there's no way that I can do this in good conscience. I've I've got a host, we've got to cook, we gotta eat, and we gotta have a grand old time. So that's what we did. My last two years of college was wonderful. But this year was different because oh. <laughs> for the first time, I really didn't have to, like, get up really early, go to the store, buy a bunch of stuff, and, and gear up for this. I got to take it easy. And so uh, some of the guys and I actually organized a little boys' brunch for uh, Saturday. I heard about that. Right, was, that's cute. was uh, me and... Ian Trift, Chris Sachi, uh, Kaz Hoffman. Yeah, current characters. Got Cowboy right. Kyle, Tucker Brooks, uh, Neil Trumler, <laughs> Zach Bro. It was a magnificent yeah, it's a crew. Strong crew. Yeah, you're and, just missing uh, Chad there. They really, but we, that's okay. Yeah, unfortunately, Chad was could not was not there. Um, was Chad invited? Did Chad get blackballed from this event? No, I I'm pretty sure we gave Chad an invite. I was okay, invited. Yes, yes, it was. I was invited. Just <laughs> wanted to double check. Just yeah. wanted to double check. You love that little period of awkward silence there, don't you, everybody? <laughs> On the edges of your seats right now. No, Chad, unfortunately, not there. I was. I, I wish he was there. It would have been really fun. I enjoy yes. Chad's presence in my life. Obviously, okay. I called him this morning. Uh, he was not. He was not in the office. Right. And uh, he he answered the phone, and I was like, "Good morning, my darling." That's how I feel about Chad. I'll treasure that. Wait, that explains it all. Okay, okay. it's beautiful. No. All right, I yep. gotta gotta circle back, gotta focus here. Yeah. Boys about me. brunch minus Chad, unfortunately, to we your started, dismay. Yeah, we started at Service Brewing. They had a little Christmas market going on. You really ate there, delightful. or you're just you ate there? No, Service Brewing. No, no, but they had a Christmas market going on. So, like, a bunch of, like, okay. local sellers, uh, you know, selling a lot of cool items. Uh, Chris Sachi yep. got some You get some, some trinkets? Because he's just a honey fiend. Oh, yeah. I, as am I. Us northerners, we love our honey. There were some nice candles there as well. And, uh, you know, you could get a couple uh, bites to eat. You could get a coffee and, and some things like that. And, of course, you're at service brewing, so if you so desire... Uh, it's not too early to to grab a beer, uh, but we actually uh, partook in in some heavier uh, sustenance at a top deck. Oh, which is where you ended up finding your food and some thicker or some sturdier drinks. It seems like you are hinting at. Yeah, uh, uh, we ordered two mimosa towers when we were at top deck. It's a power move. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was really pleasant uh the weather kind of overcast but it felt amazing outside and so that was that was really nice <laughs> okay really setting the scene here just listen to some good <laughs> tunes a lot of classic rock going they played should okay. i stay or should i go by the clash and boy that got the people going a little bit 
The last time that came on shuffle in my car, I put on a wild performance. So yeah, it uh, really gets the people going. I'm thinking that I, I got to keep that song in the back of my head if I ever want to, you know, do a little show with that one. Right, a little karaoke. And if there's somebody that you kind of are up in the air with in the premises that could actually kind of serve as like a message to this person of like, hey, where do we stand here? Uh, so that that could be pretty good. Oh, uh, all man. right, back to you, Josh. <laughs> back to you. You listen to rock. It's overcast, but it's nice out. You're very well lubricated. You've got some food. You're at top deck. And, uh, you know, buffalo chicken tacos, little house pretzel okay. action as well. <laughs> And then, yeah, yeah. you know, it's getting uh, a lot closer to the game, so we uh, abandon right. top deck and make oh. our move for uh, the social club. Oh, third location. Yes, but as we are walking to social club, we get very, very close, and as we approach it, we hear some singing coming outside, and these people are really going at it. I mean, like, like they are just siren, singing huh? to their hearts content like sucking you in yeah and uh we stumble upon uh the rail pub which is literally just up the street from the social club and two who doors would down be on the stage outside singing but devin and Karis. oh classic <laughs> oh man and we were just we were just standing outside hyping them up it was amazing I saw uh, Kara and Savannah perform Super Bass on that very stage, St. Patrick's Day 2021. Never forget. It was an incredible performance. Uh, okay, so good. So you run into the pals, uh, and did you get sucked into rail, or were you able to get over to Social Club? It was just a slight distraction. Yeah, slight distraction. Believe it or not, okay. we did not right. get uh, sucked in. You know, we, we tried to show uh, some good discipline and uh, decided to just go over to Social Club, mainly because I did not want to miss the uh, SEC on CBS theme song for the very last time. Uh, rest in peace. <laughs> Gone are the days of Brad and Gary. That was fun. It was really fun. Yeah, the Nest Dog. He's good at his job. I like, yeah. I like listening to him broadcast He's, games. He is very good. I enjoy him. Uh, so we settle in at Social Club, sitting outside, having a good time. And uh, a lot of the people who were over at Rail then came over to uh, partake in the game at Social Club, which was okay. really fun. And then uh, essentially game kicks off, and boy, I'm I'm fired up. I mean, I'm yelling, I'm barking, yeah. and I'm, I'm just, you know, the energy is there. There's, there's, some, there's some give a crap <laughs> at Social Club. You know, we'll go dogs. Sick them. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I never knew about. I never knew that this was a thing until I met Josh. Um, not even like coming down south. I didn't know that the the sick them and the amount of barking that was involved oh, dude, in Georgia rocks. Bulldogs fandom. Until I met Josh, but now I feel like I can't escape it. I see it on the internet all the time. I saw three, uh, you know, like classic frat boy, uh, looked like freshmen in red Georgia polos, like two of them on the ground, the other one just losing his mind, standing up, doing some barking for seven seconds. Uh, it's just, it, I feel like it's all over the world, and I don't know how I lived in a world where I didn't realize that Georgia fandom was so synonymous with barking. Uh, but I love it. I love it. I respect it. I love sound effects um, on the record as a sound effect guy. So it's a fun bit. Okay. So you're, you're barking. You you're bark at Social at your Club. You got, a big, you got an even Sorry, bigger Robert, crowd. I feel like that needs to be spoken. You, did you have to bark at your graduation? Did I have to bark at my graduation? Uh, I did. You don't have to, but I did. And uh, mind you, just want to get a couple notes out of the way. I've never gotten down on all fours to bark. I just do it on my uh, my two feet. And Beko, man. But would you? you You've got to you got to join uh join in on this barking and and go dogs thing. I'm telling you it is a high unlike no other. Uh it, it's it is it is really crazy the first time you do it, but you're always kind of chasing that feeling uh you know that's that first time feeling afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that chasing the dragon. Uh yeah, I I love barking. Like I I I love barking so much that my fiance I, I try not to bark around her because I I bark so much that you know, it's 
you don't want your fiance barking as much as I bark. So I, I kind of have to kind of reel myself in when it comes to the barking. Um, so yeah, Georgia would have been a dangerous place for me to go to school. The one problem, and then we'll get back to, to your evening because we're starting to get to the climax here, uh, is that I, I do not like watching football in person. I love, I love watching it on TV. It is such an amazing uh, TV sport, but you can't really see what's happening. A play happens. You you have to wait like 30 to 40 seconds. Uh, it is literally the most boring sport I've ever seen in person. Um, and, and this is what I get. I go to a basketball school, Syracuse. I mean, the football team's a joke. My high school, the football team was a joke. Sorry. I saw these high school. They actually just won their first section game in like 30 or 35 years. So uh, shout out those Sawyers. But yeah, I mean, it's just, but I love watching on TV. You, you see the play, you see the best angle, you get the replay, you might get another replay. You're not Good missing crowd anything. Shots. Great crowd shots. The sound, is, the sound design is unbelievable. Um, Surrender. Oh, what a great TV sport. Yeah, yeah. You're you're just always seeing the best stuff. Where, Correct. Uh, you know, I went to I went to Cuse and Pitt at Yankee Stadium a few weekends ago, and myself and my three college roommates all went and all, well, all reminded how boring football is to watch a person. But I know that you had a very different experience at UGA. Although I, th- I once again circle back to the way that you experienced the SEC championship the past two years, and I'm like, yeah, that's the way to do it. You get it run around, you get to you do some grilling, you watch it on the TV. Yeah, but here's uh, the but thing, I've never man, been. You're, yeah, you're you watched. Pitt Syracuse in Yankee Stadium, a baseball stadium. If you watch this in the confines of great or not Grayson Stadium, my goodness, what am I doing? You watch this in the confines of Sanford Stadium, man. Great angles. Uh, the all the people who do the tech on the jumbotron and all that stuff. It, it's pretty delightful. I'm telling you. I think it might change your mind. Oh, I, I bet it will. I've never you been feed, to. You feed off of that yeah. crowd so much, man. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm in, I'm going, I was, I was going to the carrier dome. I went to like one or two games in my three years there. We got, I watched us get stomped by LSU and Leonard Fournette my freshman year. Uh, and then I watched us get stomped by Louisville and Lamar Jackson my sophomore year. So it was like, you know, I went to see those guys play and I was like, whoa, that's a superhuman. That was pretty cool to see in person. But besides that, there was, there was really no reason to go. Uh, both times that we upset Clemson when I was in school, I watched it from the comfort of my apartment. And that was just an amazing experience. And then also at Syracuse, you usually just you just tailgate the entire day. And then if you find out that the team won, you you continue tailgating. And if yeah. not, you, you go home and have your own little party or whatever. But anyhow, yeah, I digress. I, I got I would love to go to a Georgia football game with you. So that's that's a little something. You can come up to Santa Claus. I'll come down to UGA for a football game. It'll be a delightful uh, prep season next year. Uh, to you to finish out your night as you get closer to your pit of despair that you're going to end up in here at the end of it. Yeah. So Doc scored first in the ball game. That was great. And <laughs> then here, here is part of where it all went downhill. Is is Zach Brill looking at right. me being like, you know. Does it scare you that the dogs have gotten off to a, a start this hot when this isn't something that they've done all season? I was like, no, they're just they're just playing their game however they want to, man. You know, I, I trust yeah. what we're doing here. <laughs> and right. dude, I'm telling you, as soon as Zach Zach said all that, it, it completely swung the entire game. The momentum, the play calling, I can't explain it, man. That's just bad LSU fan mojo or something. I I can't explain it. And so then, you know, we're getting frustrated because then Alabama's up at the half. Things are not looking good. I'm not having a I'm not having the best time in the world. <laughs> right. And uh, you know, the dogs really they they never reclaim the lead. They just continue to trail. There's some some tough calls from the refs about whether balls Classic. were even caught, but they don't go under review and I, I don't I don't want to get into it. Dogs try at the end, come up a little short, and uh, yeah, I just I sat there, sat there for a uh, just a good couple of minutes and just kind of just kind of stared at the ground, just kind of stared off into who knows what. I just like my body, my body was in social club, but but was my mind? Can't really say that it was. No, your mind was in Jacksonville. Yeah, that's that's how they get you right there. It was really tough. I I was I was upset. 
some people were trying to, you know, bring the spirits up and everything. And uh, what we decided after that was to um, was to go to rail and essentially sing all of our troubles away. So what song did you select to slay your inner demons after the death of the Bulldogs' championship hopes? Now, believe it or not, this was a first for me. I, uh, I did two. Two songs. <laughs> two and, uh, songs? Two songs! Yeah. I, I, I got up there and uh, did it twice. And uh, my first one was a duet, believe it or not. And uh, it was with some folks who were in town. I'm not gonna give away any spoilers. This is this is feels like a maybe a better story for another day. I don't really know. Okay, all right, fine. that's cool. We get, next Wednesday night when we're on here. Uh, Noah Bridges, by the way, warms the heart to to see you in here. Uh, Missy, you beautiful boy. Uh, okay, next Wednesday we find out who Josh's duet was. What a cliffhanger! Yeah. And the podcast right here. That's it. We're done. <laughs> Uh, nudge, nudge, hint, hint, could be, uh, somebody associated with, uh, Bananas fandom. How about okay. that? All right. So maybe someone not inside the organization, but a lover of the things we do. Maybe someone within the organization, maybe someone not within the organization. Wow. Okay. All right. That's, that's all I can say. So it currently, based on your parameters, could be anybody in the world. I can't wait to find out who yeah, it is. Pretty much, you know. Uh, we did, uh, me and this uh, mystery guest sang Islands in the Stream by, uh, it's a Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton duet. Yeah, I've never heard of it, but maybe I've heard it. Uh, believe it or not, they let me do Kenny, which was very kind of them. Although, trust me, well, you've my got a falsetto... Deep voice. Yeah. My falsetto was, oh. you know, in a place where I could have done Dolly just fine. Okay, so you will you reveal your second song, or is that also information that will be on next week's podcast? No, I can I can reveal the the second song. So we okay. we sang that outside. Uh, they move upstairs. Uh, Rachel's the head karaoke DJ, which Rachel's like just feels like we've got a good connection now done a couple songs uh rachel's been the the dj most of the time just feels like we're right we're good pals i usually tip okay and or okay to well you know all depends on how busy it is some other things <laughs> okay uh, yeah yeah so i went with the tried and true i went with the classic i went with the crowd pleaser i did rick james's super freak yeah the go-to legendary yeah it felt good I don't think it was my greatest performance of all time, but at the end of the night, it, it got the job done. Got a little Stella Artois in hand. It's usually um, the only the only requirement is you, you got to do it while you're drinking a Stella. Yeah, no doubt about that. I've always said that about Super Freak Karaoke. Uh, delightful. Well, okay. Well, I'm glad. And, and by the end of it, if this is also not spoiling the grand conclusion coming up next week... Uh, you were able to lay your head on the pillow and fall asleep. Your demons weren't keeping you up, thinking about what could have been with this UGA season. Things were okay. You talk it out. You think it out. You you speak with other fans. You have some moments, and uh, you know you you just you find yourself uh, being able to to come to terms and be honest with yourself. They call that uh, character growth in the industry. And uh, yeah. you just you just go home. Um, make a little uh, snack before you go to bed. Drink drink some water, and and boom, you wake up and it's a it's a brand new day with with new beginnings. Beautifully said. That is some really nice knowledge and insight that we can leave the people with this week. Uh, Chad, Josh, is there anything else in your heart of hearts on your mind that has to be said on the fourth episode, which is actually officially episode three of the Rain Delay podcast? I'd I'd love to rave on uh Chad's uh background for this episode. The Seinfeld <laughs> yeah. background. For all the a, YouTubers. Is a yeah. map. Anybody watching on YouTube as somebody who is an Oh avid my gosh, I'm Seinfeld not even fan. recording my camera. It's oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, rookie mistake. Hold up. 
I just realized that, Josh. You didn't even like make me think. The, I, boom. Here we oh, go. Oh, nice. There we are. Hold up. Big reveal so, at the very, very end. That's fascinating. So it has I've not been, been Seinfeld this I've entire time. I've been looking at nope, it Nope, there's been nothing. It's just been you two goobers. That's incredible. Um, mine is a secret, and I would love for somebody in the comment section to tell me what is behind me. It's one of my favorite places in the world. But big hit. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Biko's apartment in New Jersey. That's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing what you can get once you move out of the city. Oh my gosh, those <laughs> those dollars just they can they can do absolutely <laughs> amazing things on the other side of the Hudson River. Um, delightful stuff. Well, it, it has warmed my heart to see your faces and uh, hear your voices again. Thank you everybody who watched and listened on Instagram Live. I will say the exact same thing to all of you. It is it's just delightful to get the gang back together and and kind of burn off some of this steam that normally is is being cooked at uh you know about 350 to 400 degree Fahrenheit um you know stove type level during the year completely makes sense in my mind I hope everybody gets that when we've got you know 3 to 3 to 4 broadcasts every week of banana ball and this is just a, a beautiful way for us to fill the void with our thoughts that start clanging around our brains. Um, and it warms the heart that people are, are in here and interacting with us. It, it, it's really delightful. Yeah, Lord, Lord knows we got thoughts, you know. Speaking we of got uh, brains thinking. The chat, 862386, asked if it was my turn to do the closing song this week. I, I have nothing prepared, but I would like to try to get back into that, that tradition that we started at the beginning of the podcast's life and uh, kind of stopped doing. Um, so maybe maybe next time I can I can prepare a little ditty for everybody since these other two boys have so graciously sang a song about wh- wherever they whatever we were at the time. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Josh had a West Palm Beach song. I have a unreleased Daytona song that is in the archives currently. So no, it, it was in the, yeah. it was in the episode. We put it in there. Correct. It never was released. But I still would love if we got a Chad song next week and then all break out a Biko song the following week and then we can get back to Josh. And now, I mean, the songs can really be about anything because we're not shackled by our second of three formats. We're in the third format era. Two episodes in the third format era here. And I think the song can be about anything uh, unless you Honestly, guys disagree. I, I really did love episode zero. Everybody's singing... Uh, good riddance by Green Day. That was that was oh, solid. Yeah, maybe riddance, maybe we was. can still tap into a little bit of karaoke after this karaoke discussion and and leave the people with with something to remember. Yeah, I don't think we'll get banged for any copyright. No, I mean, so, okay. we just we just said we did we not had if no it's, music not if last it's time. Us, it was acapella. You know? I mean, no, they wouldn't do that to to the broadcast boys of Banana oh, Land. I mean, nah, come on. they're just they're just good old guys. You know, yeah. they're honest folk. Good boys. Any Correct. suggestions and for if, uh, a song yeah. to end us out on, guys? If And if anybody gives us trouble, we've got the man in the yellow tux who will take care of all of our problems, as per usual. Big Papa's got our backs. Chad, I think you were saying something, but all I could think about was a vision of Jesse Cole going out and beating people up while I hide behind him. I was just trying to think of a song for us to uh, to end this end this episode on. Oh, to end this podcast? I, I think, I mean... Maybe we do a, the one know, we're doing right now. I don't now. have anything prepared or written. Maybe we just kind of tap back into that acapella, do some karaoke like Josh has been talking about for the past few minutes. Okay, terrific. Todd Patton is requesting a song here, so if Todd wants a song, we're, we're going to have to deliver a song. Josh, a song. anything uh, at the uh, front of your cerebellum? Uh, do we do we just uh, do the uh, do we do we like sing or or essentially I don't know. Do we do we sing? The instrumentation of the Seinfeld theme song, is that how we close out this podcast? That sounds great to me. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that Genius. too is that too crazy of a recommendation? Yes. I like it. I mean no. Nothing's too crazy. Sweet. This is gonna be awful for us to all try to sync up with each other. I don't know if we should be like listening. Well, that's perfect. I, I hope that all three of us are at different parts, and I actually don't even know the theme song good enough to do it from memory. So this is I, I like this. That's why I like this idea so much more than even if we it's did just, know what was happening. Just unplanned chaos. 
I, I like it. Okay. I like it. Josh, I think you should take the lead, and then Chad and I can can come in. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah Josh that, should be our metronome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Uh, I'm just going to preface this. Fair warning. It starts with just a bass note. So I'm going to do the bass yeah. note, and then we'll launch into it after that, okay? Okay, so we'll follow All right, sounds good. And okay. real quick, before that, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. on the dot. Sound good to you guys next week? My goodness. Is this, I'll be there at 4.30. You're, you're really going to do that at the end of this podcast, huh? Well, the the people, it's for the people, really. It's not for us. It's it's so the people know when they can tune into Instagram Live to catch this as it's coming from our mouths. Okay. All right, beautiful. Start us off, Josh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Little rascal. Bow. I think we nailed it. I'm pretty good. Oh, man. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Steve Kellogg, sorry you have a meeting scheduled for 5 p.m. next Wednesday. Luckily, this will also be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Are you in control? Not of that. No, that was not controllable. <laughs> <laughs> We're never in control. All right. Well, this has been delightful. Good song. Good music. Yeah, feels let's, good. Let's close it out. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. See you later.